what in fact is the satanic mindset. We've described that Satanism is an occult religion. It's ancient. The rulers of our world, the, the people who are truly enthroned behind the scenes, the, the ostensible carters of power, who are truly enthroned behind all worldly institutions, are dark occultists or ancient psychologists who are manipulating the people of this world into compliance and submission to their will. But what is their mindset? What is the defining hallmarks and characteristics of their belief system that they then give to us at a lower level that enables people to be able to be controlled? And again, this is going to be some review from Demystifying the Occult Part 2, but it's necessary as a setup to help people to understand de facto Satanism. There are four main tenets of the Satanic mindset or religion. The first is selfishness or egotism. Again, I would claim that you could call Satanism egotism, or the religion of the self, and it would be highly accurate. Uh, but I think, you know, referring to it as Satanism really connects it with the concept of the adversary, the adversarial dynamic in nature, involution, the force which is holding human consciousness back, which is highly accurate. So the first tenet of Satanism is the dictum that self-preservation is the highest law. And it's not just self-preservation, it's self-advancement, and it's really the, apotheos the apotheosis of self, of ego. It's ego as God, as we're going to talk about. But put in other words, the first Satanic dictum of self-preservation is the highest law really means this. The survival and comfort of the physical self is always a more important goal than doing what is morally right. Live for yourself only and care only about you and yours. Okay? That's the ultimate driving directive of Satanism, of the Satanic mentality, pure egotism. If you even must step on others to get what you want, then so be it, for this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And how many people think exactly like that and live exactly like that? See, this is the key that I'm trying to connect in people's minds. If Satanism is about pure egotism and selfishness, how many people do you say, see embodying that ideology? How many people do you see living like that in the world and making that their mindset and their ideology? It's most people. It's not a matter, it's not a question of how many people are in the satanic mindset. It's a question of how many are not. It's a tiny handful that are not in this mindset. They have inculcated most of the world into a lower level variant of the satanic religion. Uh, the tenet that clearly defines the overarching worldview of satanism is perpetual me, me, me thinking. So I asked the question in breaking down the very first tenet of Satanism as egotism and selfishness. Would you or would you not agree that the vast majority of individuals in our society, in our world, subscribe to such a worldview? And I think if you're being honest with yourself, you realize that it's virtually everyone. It's a, it's a matter of who have they not gotten who have they not converted to this religion of selfishness? This is our entire culture. This is our entire worldview as human beings, as human society. And that's what has to ultimately change. And that's a tall task. That's why it's called the great work to change it. The second tenet of ideological Satanism is moral relativism. Again, when we break down what it is, you'll see most people subscribe to this worldview. Moral relativism is the ideology that there is no objective difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. There's no real objective moral standard of behavior. It's purely arbitrary. So human beings may arbitrarily create or decide for themselves what right and wrong are based upon their own whims and their own preferences. It's just a subjective construct of the mind that we can say this is right, this is wrong, if that's what's comfortable for us, if that's what feels right for us. In other words, 
that which we consider right for ourselves is what is right, and that which we consider wrong for ourselves is what is wrong. Since, according to the inherent and objective laws of morality, the aggregate amount of morality present in the lives of the people of any given society is directly proportional to the amount of freedom in that society, that is how natural law functions. Aggregate freedom determines aggregate morality. Then true freedom can never exist in a society that embraces moral relativism, because that society will almost always behave in an immoral capacity, or allow behavior in an immoral capacity to go on unrestrained and unchecked and unchallenged. So I ask people to ask themselves honestly the question and honestly answer, more importantly, honestly answer the question, do you agree or disagree that the vast majority of human beings in our society subscribe to the ideology of moral relativism? As a matter of fact, again, I tell people the anecdote all the time. I've done many, many social experiments, literally going to street corners in different geographic areas and just asking people, we have a quick poll that we're conducting, do you think right and wrong are inherent in the natural world, inherent to nature, or are they subjective human constructs of mind that we get to invent and decide upon? And we, we've gotten upwards of 70% of people, in some areas, 75%, three out of four human beings. In, in what I might call slightly better moral areas of hu the human population in certain geographical regions, We've the lowest percentage that we've gotten in these social uh, experiments is two thirds, two out of three. Never even once in all the social experiments that we've done over the years gotten even a 50 50 breakdown. Minimum two out of three people are moral relativists. The highest that we've gotten in any one given geographic area is three out of four, so over 75, slightly over 75%. Imagine that. This is where we're at in human consciousness. And it's rapidly growing worse, not better. Until we do something about it, it will continue to get worse. So that's the second tenet of Satanism, moral relativism. The belief that there's no objective right or wrong, they're constructs of the mind, and we can make, up, make them up and say whatever they are. This leads to the third tenet, which is social Darwinism. And again, these are loosely defined tenets. You're not going to find like one book or document that just says this is exactly what they are. From me being in the religion for many years, I garnered this through speaking with people, through also reading texts and seeing what people who espouse the satanic ideology say. This has to be understood. This is a, uh, a condensing of... Many years of research, and not only research, but personal lived life experience on my part being around these people and having very in-depth discussions with them on many occasions. Social Darwinism is the third tenet. This is the extension of the theory of Darwinian macrobiological evolution into the human domain, into human society. So you're bringing animal behavior and theories regarding it into the human realm, which is a big slippery slope, if you properly understand it. The proponents of Darwinian macrobiological evolution postulate the notion of survival of the fittest animals, meaning that animals who are the most dominant will rule their social strata in the animal kingdom. Applying this then to the human domain, this theory puts forward the notions that, number one, it is the quote-unquote natural order, and even desirable on the behalf of human beings, for human society to be ruled by the most dominating and vicious of humans. And two, the second notion is that such human beings' genes are the reason that they acquired their position of power in the first place, and the reason that they maintain their positions of power in human social strata.
So would you agree or disagree that the vast majority of human beings in our society subscribe to such an ideology? That they're perfectly fine with there being this hierarchical construct of rulers over other human beings that make the decisions for many, many, many other people. And they believe it's just fine and it is actually the natural order for a small group of dominant, vicious, domineering, control freak human beings to really seize and maintain power over other people and dictate how they must live. And I'd say most people are perfectly fine with it. That is generally being perfectly okay with the concept of government because that's what it is. Government is a form of slavery. And it is basically saying these human beings can get to dictate that's called making a law over how all of the rest of human beings are going to live because they consider that they know better, that they're just, you know, a better fit to rule, better fit to make those decisions for others, and then other people must obey their dictates. And that's just the form of slavery through violence and coercion that we euphemize with the word government. And that's what, that all comes out of the belief in social Darwinism. If people did not believe in social Darwinism, they would never put up with the slavery called government. And that is how this satanic mindset gets into the minds of the average person and just rules over their entire men mentality. And ultimately their spirit. The fourth and final tenet is taking the other three tenets of the satanic mindset to their natural conclusion, you might say. And it is eugenics, or what I like to call even better than eugenics, it's actually dysgenics. Because it's not the passing along of good expressions of genetics, it's actually degrading human genetics over time to make people easier to rule. But uh, in Satanism, they would call this eugenics, and here's what it is. The word eugenics is derived from the Greek adjective eugenes, which means well-born. Eugenes as an adjective in Greek is in turn derived from the Greek adjective eu, meaning good, and the Greek noun genos, meaning race or stock. So we put them all that all together. Eugenos, eugenes, means um, well-born, um, those with good genes. Okay, in the mindset of those who are postulating what uh, you know their variation or version of good and bad are. So eugenics, as practiced in our world, is a social ideology advocating the promotion of higher rates of sexual reproduction for people with traits and characteristics desired by its proponents or desired by the ruling class and reduced rates of sexual reproduction and sterilization for those with undesirable, undesired traits and characteristics. This tenet describes the ideology of Satanism taken to its ultimate conclusion, the final solution, you might say. It goes something like this. Since man is God, and he gets to make up what right and wrong are, and since it is simply the quote-unquote natural order for the most ruthless of human beings whose genes are the fittest, quote-unquote, to rule the rest of the human herd, then that, quote, elite class of human beings in the highest positions of worldly power have every right to decide who is allowed to live and procreate and who must die and will not be able to procreate and pass along their genetic characteristics. And again, as I talked about in many other presentations, and podcasts, this even extends into the realm of mind and becomes a mind control method of having people actually remove characteristics from the gene pool on their own without them having to do it through physical death, through physically killing people or preventing them from actually having children through coercion. The people are doing it through a form of mind control to themselves, and I call that epi-eugenics, or, again, what I would 
describe more accurately as epidysgenics, giving people a mindset that will degrade future expressions of human beings. So going beyond traditional eugenics and not even practicing truly eugenics, good passing along of characteristics, but it's, it's active dysgenics, and I call it epidysgenics is my term for it, which is through mind control, making people degrade themselves so that you, ha- you come out with a weakened variation of the human being on the other side that is an easy slave to rule. And that's what one of the big ideologies of Satanism is, uh, degrading the gene pool, degrading uh, the expression and characteristics of what a human being is, not just through genes, but through behavior as well. So to, to define ultimately what a de facto Satanism is, it's embodying, believing in, and expressing the general tenets of Satanism at a lower form of expression than the, the high-level member dark occult ruling class, through your deeds, through your own behavior, through your the expression of your behavior, but which is ultimately directed through your mindset. A Satanist in their deeds is a Satanist indeed. And here are the defining characteristics expressed ultimately once again here. There are the five points of the inverted star, the inverted pentagram, which originally represented the five elements of earth, air, water, and fire. And then the fifth element of spirit, which should be in a uh, defining uh, higher level position, which is ultimately directing the other four elements. And the top uh, point of the star would be uh, the fifth element of spirit. And Satanism, again, seeks to invert everything, so they're trying to destroy the spirit. They're trying to destroy spirituality and keep it suppressed by these other tenets of pure selfishness, egotism, and materiality. So selfishness and egotism is one of the four points of the pentagram, the inverted pentagram, moral relativism, social Darwinism, eugenics and dysgenics, all ultimately designed to destroy human spirituality to destroy the human spirit so that people can be ruled and kept slaves in our world. And that is exactly what the human condition is, covert slavery. And it is all done through the destruction of human spirituality through the other tenets of Satanism and getting people to do it to themselves by subscribing to this belief system which they are ultimately inculcated into from the moment they're born.